Welcome to PMRI campus. In this video, we want to analyze the Virginian Port Kerala. This is an independent ana analysis of the present state. Now, these days, a lot of turmoil is happening uh, around the port premises. The construction is happening and uh, the local fishermen uh, along with the church, uh, they are protesting, uh, they are asking for a, a re-study of the environmental impact of this project uh, because there is acute soil erosion and they are blaming it on the construction of this port and their houses are lost, the rehabilitation work is not really progressing. So a lot of confusion there and because of all these things there is an agitation going on and there was a temporary interruption to the construction activities. When I saw the videos, uh, when I saw the reports uh, in the media, many of them uh, were not uh, very truthful. They were all reporting from maybe thousands of uh, miles, uh, sitting thousands of miles away. Uh, and me being uh, very close to this port location, uh, I thought I'll be able to come out with a very impartial 360 degree view of the situation. So that was the trigger for this video. This Virginium port is located uh, in the Virginium, in Virginium in Kerala. This is India's first mega transship container terminal. That means even mother ships can come into the port. We don't have any other port in India which has this kind of a capacity. It is closest to the international shipping routes uh, from Oman. Uh, now ships are, if you really see the map, ships are flying from Oman to uh, Sri Lanka. That that path is there, so this is very close to that. And they're building. Adani Group is doing this project, and they're saying they're building state-of-the-art infrastructure to handle mega max container ships. And the first phase. As per the minister's statement uh, recently, the first phase, the revised completion date is September 2023. So this is the snapshot of the project. Now, who are all investing in this? We have Adani Group putting in 2,454 crores. Kerala state government is investing 3,436 crores. And there's a viability gap funding by center is giving 818 crores and the state is giving 817 crores. Put together, all these things put together, the total investment, uh, predicted investment to the project is 7,525 crores. So if you really see here, the Kerala state government is the biggest investor uh, in this project, followed by Adani Group and there is a 818 crore by uh, the, the, the center. 56.51 percentage of the funding is by Kerala state, 32.61 percentage by Adani group and 10.87 percentage by the central government. This is happening in a public-private partnership in project management terminology, we call it as PPP and uh, this again the contract is based on dbf40 that is design build finance operate for some time and then transfer it and i will run it for 40 years and there is provision to extend it further and these are the key stakeholders now bis that is the virginian international seaport limited that is the state Kerala state government body. Uh, they have the biggest stakes in this project. Then we have the Adani group here. The fishermen communities, the, the tourism, uh, uh, tourism operators are there, religious institutions are there. Uh, 
uh, environmentalists are there, politicians are there, and there are other ports like the Dubai port, the Singapore port, and the uh, Sri Lankan port. Uh, they their business may be affected or can be affected when this port is operational. So they are also stakeholders into it. The only difference is they have they may have negative interest to this project. And we have national interests. Uh, there are some strategies, national level, different strategies are all revolving around this. So we have uh, some national interest also uh, in this particular project. So these are the, this is the stakeholder uh, uh, list uh, for this particular project. Now, uh, the major religious institution uh, that is really getting involved in this project is the, the Latin Catholic Church because most of the fishermen community, they belong to the Latin, the Latin Catholic Church uh, parish there and they are the most affected parties in this. So the church is also involved and the church has tremendous influence on this fishing community. And this is the stakeholder analysis. So uh, we have segregated the stakeholders into for the four, four groups. Here we have the high power, high interest groups. There definitely we have Adani is there, the ISL is there, other ports, they have a negative interest. Still that interest is very high and they're very powerful as well. And people's representatives, so they are also there. So this is the high power, high interest group of stakeholders in this project. Then we have high interest, low power groups. As of today, this fishing community, their livelihood is affected. They are, their normal life is affected. So they have definitely high interest, but at the same time, they are low power. The tourism sector, around 20 or 30 resorts are affected because of this port. Uh, so that, and uh, because of soil erosion, Kowloon Beach is very close to this. Howard Beach in Kowloon is very close to this. Uh, we don't know what is the impact on those beaches uh, because of the construction of this port. So there is a, there's an impact on the tourism segment. The churches, as of today, they are high interest, low power, environmentalist, high power, uh, high interest and low power and the local politicians, they have a lot of interest but they don't have uh, power. Uh, here the people's representatives, uh, some of them are in the board of directors of this EISL, that's why I put them here as the high power, high interest group. Then high power, low interest, uh, definitely the subtle government they have a lot of power, but, but as of now, they are not showing a lot of interest because there are others to really take lead. And uh, the normal citizens of Kerala, uh, they have low interest and uh, low power as of today because uh, Trivandrum is, is at one fag and, and Virijam is the southernmost point of uh, Kerala. Uh, so citizens in other part of Kerala, uh, they may have maybe very low interest uh, as of now and maybe they don't have any power to influence the outcomes of this project. So this is the stakeholder, stakeholder analysis uh, as of now. So this is the, uh, the Google Earth snapshot of the Viridium port. So this is the Viridium port and we have the Kowla Mandal very, very near here. Uh, and this is a new construction that is happening, the Trivandrum Port Break, uh, Trivandrum Port Breakwater. Uh, this construction can have impact or definitely will have impact on uh, the, the, uh, the coastline of uh, Kerala. And most of this coastline, fishermen are, uh, this, this coastline will be affected and around eight or nine villages will be affected uh, and the fishermen uh, are unable to go for work uh, and because of this constriction uh, they are, there is a high degree of uh, erosion across the coast of, uh, across the stretch of this coast. 
Now there is a contention uh, for this. Uh, the state government is saying that this is because of climate change, not because of the port. Whereas the fisherman community is saying definitely it is because of the port, uh, because still only after the start of the construction of this port, uh, this has aggravated. So all they are asking for is do an independent study quickly and identify the root causes and come out with the corrective and preventive actions immediately. That is one of the major demands. And this is the port and uh, the problem is here. So, uh, and, and this is the demand, see. Now, there are interpretations like the fisherman community is asking for permanent closure of the port. That and all is not truth. All they're saying is uh, stop construction till a detailed study is conducted and uh, the impact analysis is done and immediately come up with the corrective actions and the preventive actions and do the rehabilitation work as fast as possible. So these are the demands. And now uh, they're pretty okay with the continuation of work at the port site, but still uh, there is moral right on all, this, all the high power, high interest stakeholders to look into the matters or to protect the interest of the uh, low power, high interest groups. Now, immediate concerns or demands raised by the people of that area are construction is causing massive sea erosion, taking away their livelihood and dwellings. This is really happening. They want an impact study conducted and the project to remain suspended until the study report comes out. Rehabilitation of families who lost their homes to erosion, that must happen immediately, that's what they're saying. And effective steps to mitigate costly erosion and financial assistance on days weather warnings are issued. Because the moment weather warnings are issued, the fishermen cannot go to the sea uh, so on such days, uh, there should be some compensation uh, so that they can uh, manage uh, their day-to-day -day expenditure. And compensation to the families of those who lose their lives in accidents. The moment the port comes there, uh, this vessel traffic will increase. The chances of accidents also will be more. So in case if there, is, there are accidents, uh, uh, there must be a system to compensate uh, the families of those who lost their lives in accidents. And subsidized kerosene. This demand is because the moment the port comes there, if the fisherman community has to go to the, they will have to go to the outer sea for fishing. That means they will have to uh, burn uh, more kerosene, which is the fuel for their uh, boats. So they must get subsidized kerosene to compensate for this. It, so, it sounds uh, very genuine. And mechanism to dredge the nearby fishing harbor, the moment the port happens and the, and the traffic builds in the port, uh, there can be sedimentation in the, in the nearby fishing harbor. Uh, and so there must be a provision to dredge the nearby fishing harbor periodically. So these are the immediate concerns or demands or risks raised by the local community. And the root causes for people protesting, houses are getting destroyed due to soil erosion and improper rehabilitation and lack of accountability slash trust. Some reports uh, said that a okay, Danny group has already spent 100 crores on rehabilitation work, whereas these people have not received any. So at least there should be an investigation to see how this money is spent. So houses are getting destroyed due to soil erosion, that is truth. But then what is the root cause for this? Is it the general climatic change or is it the impact of the construction of the port? So that must be uh, decided fast and 
corrective actions and preventive actions must be taken. That is the demand. But then this is getting delayed for years together now. And lack of accountability slash trust. People don't believe uh, that much uh, the local politicians anymore. So there is absolute uh, lack of accountability from their side and there is no trust at all. See, this is this is the kind of rehabilitation provided to people. They all had independent house, uh, legitimate house, like with the you know the survey number and all those things. And these their houses got uh, that area uh, got damaged because of uh, erosion, and they are staying in this godown <clears throat> for more than three or four years now. And they, are, they did not get a, uh, another place to live. So they are all dumped into this uh, is God on. And it, it looks like it is, a, it is a very pathetic state. Nobody has taken initiative to do something about these uh, poor uh, families living here. And the aggravating factors when people are really crying about losing their livelihood and losing their houses to erosion, which is really happening, then the blame game starts. Blaming, blaming of soil erosion on climate change, not on the port. What is the basis? Doubt on politicians for misusing funds given for rehabilitation. And I need say 100 crores are spent. As per the project, DPR, around 35 crores are supposed to be spent for rehabilitation. How is this money utilized? Because it has not reached, as per what I can infer, it, it is not used properly or it has not reached the deserving people. Attempts to politicize. Now, polit other parties are also are entering into the fray. And doubt on competition for funding through NGOs. Uh, there is a rumor spread. I don't know how true it is. Uh, they say uh, all these things are happening because there is somebody working behind. Uh, the NGOs are getting funds from uh, maybe other ports or promoters of other ports who are losing business because of this. That all those are speculated uh, stuff. Uh, if there is evidence. Uh, they can be arrested, but that has not happened yet. Then attempts to divide people based on religion. Actually, this is not a problem of any particular religion. There are people belonging to every other religion living there. Uh, so it is not a, a problem of any other religion uh, or any particular religion. It is a problem of uh, the church is taking initiative because the majority of the people who are really affected are the parishioners uh, of the church in that locality. So they are uh, taking lead uh, to do something about this poorest of the poor uh, and protecting their livelihood and uh, getting them, trying to get them a better living conditions. These are not orphans. These are all people who had families living in their own property. Something has to be done. Then attempts to play religious cards. Okay, I already explained it. Then attempts to label the protesters as anti-nationals and terrorists. So this is a general trend we are seeing across uh, the country. When somebody is opposing or if somebody has a concern, immediately they are labeled as anti-nationals uh, anti and terrorists. And definitely there is a strong sentiment against uh, lack of business case for the state government. The project started when uh, the Congress ministry was in power. Now if you read it, I already showed the slide. The major investor is Kerala state government, but the major beneficiary is uh, the Adani group. Uh, but, so the contract is already signed. Uh, so people know that uh, so there is something, or people think that there is something fishy in the business case of the project itself and the contract itself. But still, it is okay because 
if the sport runs well and if the area prospers because of this and if it is going to do good to the country that is okay then support for the fishermen community because of their great rescue operations during the kerala floods the place the place where we are recording this video itself was drowned during the the major kerala floods and before any other help came to us it was the fishermen community who volunteered and saved the lives of thousands of people and one fine day the zeros are becoming are labeled as anti nationals and terrorists that nobody likes now if the situation is not managed properly what can happen is uh the central government will interfere already there were talks about uh, deploying the army and all those things adani vsl other ports people's representative they are already high power high interest sell government also will come in suddenly they will show a lot of interest and the fishing community they will team up with politicians the the tourism church environmentalist politicians and citizens of normal citizens of kerala and other religious communities also join hands with the fishing community the the whole proposition will change suddenly they also become high power high interest this is exactly what happened in the tata nano car project uh, which was supposed to happen uh, in a, in bengal then the farmers demanded uh, i think 20 or 30 crores compensation and the project owners refused to do it suddenly they teamed up with the politicians and they became a formidable group they became high power high interest uh, all of a sudden and because of all these things the project had to be cancelled and moved to gujarat at the loss of 700 crores if with 10 percentage of that loss they could have managed the uh, the farmers interest a similar situation should not arise here it has if it is not managed properly that situation can arise here <coughs> so as of today things are not that bad because uh, people have started uh, discussing uh, the, the the discussions are on so we are uh, hopeful of an amicable solution to this then uh, i was always studying the dpr of this project the long term expectations from the projects are infrastructure to be improved like drinking water sanitation sewage better drainage systems solid waste management road and street light facilities widening of pavements underpass shopping facility clubs parks playground auditorium better postal services banking facilities better electricity supply transformer etc so this is a long term expectation once the port is operational then health facilities local communities are in need of good government hospital veterinary hospital and mosquito control and education facilities also need attention job opportunities need to be created there should be preference for the local community people uh, whenever uh, to be absorbed into the port related jobs and the new fishing harbor and a fish marketing area need to be considered and tourism this sector needs new infrastructure for tourists and development of tourist township these are long term expectations but this current turmoil uh, that is not because of this it is because of uh, soil erosion people losing their houses and no proper uh, rehabilitation on time that is the issue environmental impact these are the concerns raised by the environmentalists the phase one alone requires more than 7 million metric tons of stone sand and soil for construction of a breakwater stretching almost 3.18 kilometers into the sea with 1 kilometer width at the top and unspecified width at bottom with an average depth of 20 meters 
This material is thought to be sourced from blasting quarries in the hills of Tiruvannadapuram and from neighboring district of Kanyakumari in Tamil Nadu, falling in the Western Ghats region. This will definitely have negative impact. This will have major impact on the entire Kerala because uh, the hills are getting demolished and the stones are you know, getting dumped uh, or getting utilized uh, for the construction of the port. Uh, definitely it will have long term impacts on the climate of Kerala. Uh, the rainfall can reduce and already during the monsoon time we hear many many cases of landslides. Uh, because of all these activities, the, as, as per the Kasturi Rangan report, uh, the, the soil uh, is, is, is not hard anymore. So the moment rain comes, there is, uh, uh, you know, uh, there are floods and there are landslides. People are dying every year because of that. So anyway, this damage is already done. We cannot do much about these things anymore. So this has already happened. Now people are also saying, see, it is not it's not that everybody is all the time talking negative things about this project. The same people when a survey is conducted, they're saying it's an opportunity to develop the area and improve the quality of life of the local people. They see an opportunity there. An increase in the value of property that is under benefit. Better employment opportunities, that is another benefit. Development of small scale industries and overall development of the local economy and communication system. So these are the benefits uh, people foresee from this project. And based on all these things, my proposal is 11 steps to peace and prosperity. What we should do to make this project a lucrative project for the entire nation, which includes the local community as well. The first point is listen to the low power, high interest groups with empathy. Please understand the real problem. Visit that place, see how they are living. Understand how are their living conditions. Talk to them with empathy, not as a boss. Take measures immediately to rehabilitate those who lost their homes. Because how can people live for years in gardens and all? Something has to be done. Do not force them to stay in apartments which are away from the seashore. See, the fishermen are more more or less like the tribals. Tribals, they go for hunting into the forest. Fishermen, they go hunting into the sea to catch fish. How can you lock them in apartments which are, or flats which are away from the seashore? How will they work? You're taking them away from their environments. So they must be rehabilitated very close to the seashore itself and and it must be independent houses must be constructed and given to them not apartments or flats manage all corrective and preventive actions as projects if you really look at the uh, detailed project report a lot of corrective actions and preventive actions are mentioned including uh, the rehabilitation and uh, corrective preventive action for soil erosion, corrective action for soil erosion, everything is there in the DPR report. Unfortunately, only the construction project is managed as a project, whereas the other projects, other rehabilitation projects, uh, and corrective action, preventive action projects. They are not managed as projects. So these things, these corrective actions and preventive actions also must be managed as projects. There should be milestones with dates. Uh, periodically, the progress must be assessed. It must be communicated 
to the affected or the key stakeholders of those projects, rehabilitation projects. And, and there should be periodic social, environmental and financial audits. And communicate the rehabilitation progress frequently and investigate the rehabilitation funds usage so far and protect and assure employment of the affected communities and focus on community welfare. And the protesters also must allow the project work to continue without any breakage in between. And the, and the protesters must also be, should ensure that the port, can, the port can function without any labor issues uh, after the commissioning of the port as well. So if we can work on this 11 points, uh, we can definitely, uh, this port can be uh, of a great, uh, great uh, project which gives a lot of peace and prosperity to the entire nation, which includes the stakeholders as well. We must approach everything with empathy uh, and uh, the focus must be on implementation of the construction of the port, implementation of the corrective and preventive actions and periodic inspection resulting in improvement of the living condition of uh, all the stakeholders who are negatively affected because of uh, uh, this new project slash we don't know slash uh, the the climate change because of global warming and stuff like that. No point in uh, you know, keeping on doing this blame game. The people are affected. That is a fact. That is a reality. So do the root cause analysis and take corrective actions and preventive actions and uh, fund it manage them as projects and bring in transparency so that we can build trust uh, among all stakeholders. So that is uh, our recommendation. Thank you very much for watching this video uh, and uh, our website is pmri.in uh, and uh, thanks for watching and we'll be coming with uh, more videos similar to this or better than this in the near future. Thanks for watching.